To say it's been a brilliant start for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Manchester United is a massive understatement. With nine wins and one draw from Solskjaer's first ten games in charge, he equaled Pep Guardiola's record to the best ever start in the Premier League by any manager. That's fantastic. But some, I think, rightly feel that now is not the time to be talking about Solskjaer getting the job full-time. But Manchester United have got a run of games coming up that I feel if Solskjaer can get the right results from them, then by the end of March, I think Solskjaer can basically guarantee himself the Man United job full-time next year. Before we get started on this video though, as you know, hit that subscribe button down there if you are new to the channel, get involved in the United People's TV community, but let's get into it. United have got a hell of a couple of months coming up in terms of our fixtures. This is what we've got to look forward to as fans. The first major game is PSG at home in the Champions League. We get to see Solskjaer in European football. Then only a few days later, we play Chelsea in the FA Cup. Our bogey ground is Stamford Bridge. It doesn't get any easier because then we play Liverpool at home in the Premier League about six days later. In between that, we've got Palace and Southampton, then PSG away in the Champions League. Then we follow that one up with Arsenal away in the Premier League only four days later. And then to top it all off, Man City at home in the Premier League. What a run of fixtures that is for Manchester United. So let's run through them all in a bit more detail. It all kicks off with PSG at home in the Champions League. Solskjaer was our hero on the greatest ever European night of football. 20 years this year, 1999, that goal against Bayern Munich at the Nou Camp. And fans are going to be hoping for another European miracle under Solskjaer because nobody gave us a chance when we drew PSG a couple of months ago. A lot has changed since then. Mourinho is no longer our manager. Solskjaer is in charge. He's won nine out of ten games. But there's no doubting that PSG are the absolute favourites for this. And for Solskjaer, as far as I'm concerned, I think these games against PSG are the two most important games he's going to have as interim Manchester United manager. Can United compete against European elite? We'll see against PSG at Old Trafford and on the away leg in March too. Will United be able to compete with PSG? Will United be able to beat PSG? These are the major questions that are going to be asked of Solskjaer. We've seen what he can do against Cardiff when United are dominating teams. We've seen what he's done against Spurs when we're struggling with backs against the wall, but we win 1-0. And then we've seen it in a big game against Arsenal as well in the FA Cup. Let's see what happens against PSG, because for me, this is going to be the major test of Solskjaer as Manchester United's interim manager. Because if he wants the job full-time, he can ill afford to be humiliated by PSG in the same fashion as Mourinho was humiliated by Sevilla. And then, only a few days later, Chelsea in the FA Cup beat Arsenal, go into the next round. Who do we get? Chelsea. Away. Stamford Bridge is Manchester United's bogey ground. That two-all game we had under Mourinho with Chelsea equalising in the last minute was the best performance there. And the last win we had there was from an offside goal from Hernandez against nine men. United typically have not performed at Stamford Bridge. And seeing as this game is only going to be a few days after our match against PSG, how will Solskjaer manage his squad? This is what we're really going to see in this period as well. We've seen Solskjaer win games, but there's, there's comfortable periods in between the matches. What Fergie was great at was squad management, using players, resting some key players in big games. But those who come in do a good job too. And I think this match is really, this period, sorry, is really going to test his squad management. How will United fare against Chelsea? It's not as important as the likes of PSG or any other games that we've got in this period, but beating Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, that'll be a massive, massive momentum boost for Solskjaer. Six days after Chelsea, Liverpool at home in the Premier League. This is a huge game for United. Now, Solskjaer is already a hero, as far as fans are concerned, for what he did at the club in his 11 years here and what he did in the European Cup final. But beating Liverpool here, putting a dent in their title campaign, maybe even being that game that starts the momentum shift. If Solskjaer can beat Liverpool and help stop them winning the Premier League, he'll just go into another level of United folklore. This is a massively important game for United. For United fans, think about it. Like last couple of years, every time we've gone into this game, it's the biggest game for the season for us. But we've really gone into it going, you know what, we can win and we can do it in style. Under Mourinho, these games were like a bad game of chess and ultimately United lost the majority of them. Or Drew, which is, you know, is what it is. But Van Howe, remember him? Remember one matter at Anfield? 
Van Hal, he had Liverpool's number. I'm hoping that Solskjaer can do the same thing. I'm nervous for what it could be, but in this big group of games that we've got coming up, I think PSG, both games, is the most important. I think Liverpool is right up there as well. If Solskjaer can win this game, momentum is really going to be built towards him being the United manager. Then after Liverpool, the next two games, we've got a Palace away and Southampton at home. They're two games where there will be pressure, of course, on Solskjaer and his United team to win. Not the same sorts of pressure against PSG, Chelsea and Liverpool. But these are games where you can always come unstuck. A win against Liverpool is great, but then if you go and drop points against Palace, it balances it out. The United can ill afford, again, in these games to let complacency slip in. And that's down to Solskjaer and keeping his players motivated. So we get to see that element of his management as well in what is a mad, mad fixture period. And then for me, the single most important game, PSG away, the second leg in Paris. I'm going to Paris, I can't fucking wait for it. To see United in European football is a, a wonderful thing, especially away from home. But to see it under Solskjaer in Solskjaer's first game against PSG, European elite, we've got Mbappe, got World Cup winners, France still buzzing from the World Cup win. It's a huge game for United. And a massive, massive test for Solskjaer. I can't underestimate how big this test is going to be. Let me know what you think and what you expect from the game. But if Solskjaer can navigate this two-leg round of 16 game and get his United team in that quarter-final draw, for me, he's put one foot in the door as United's full-time manager already. Because this is a huge test up against elite opposition. How will Solskjaer set up tactically? Will he go like the classic Fergie away, 4-5-1, where he used to play Rooney up top on his own? Will we play counter-attacking? I imagine, I have no idea what to expect. But United fans, when we got PSG in the draw, everybody was like, fuck, we're out. It's not the case anymore. Yes, PSG will definitely be favourites here, but if Solskjaer wants this job full-time, I think he's got to beat PSG. I think he's got to go through to the quarter-finals. That's how much importance I would put on this because, you know, we've won the League Cup, we've won the FA Cup, we've won the Europa League since Fergie retired. We haven't won the Champions League or the Premier League. That is what United want as a club. Di Matteo did it at Chelsea. That was a miracle. Can't hope for miracles like that, but if you can score two goals in the last couple of minutes to win a European Cup final, you can do anything. Just ask Solskjaer. But these games for me are the most important. I can't wait to see what happens. And then to follow up on that, only four days later, Arsenal away in the Premier League. Solskjaer is going to be buzzing about going back to the Emirates after what we did to Arsenal in the FA Cup, but it's only four days after that PSG away game. Arsenal are playing in the Europa League. Different sort of competitive edge going into it, I suppose, but there's a real risk of players being tired. And again, this is going to be down to squad management. Solskjaer's got to get the likes of Lukaku, Mata, players who are on the fringe hungry and competitive and ready to compete at the top level and make sure that our performances don't dip when we take the likes of Martial and Rashford out of a team. That's up to Solskjaer and how much he can get out of the squad. I think United fans will be confident about a win going into this match, but it's about that fixture pileup and the schedule and how Solskjaer balances things. Coming to this game after being knocked out of the Champions League, players will be deflated, fans will be deflated. Go into it after reaching the quarter-final things could go stratospheric. But United against Arsenal is always a cracking game and hopefully we can beat them like we did in the FA Cup quite comfortably as well. So after facing PSG twice, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, we finish at home on the 16th of March with a nice easy game against Manchester City. City at home, a fixture, let's be honest, that no United fan has really properly looked forward to in some time. Such is the difference in the quality of the football that the two teams have been playing. Last year, we had that 3-2 comeback. That was incredible. That was at the Etihad. At home, the last win we had was in 4-2 in 2015. But just overall, in a bit like the Liverpool games, you know, United going into these matches under Mourinho, you never expected United to play like United. You, you expected us to try and contain the opposition and then try and sneak a goal. Solskjaer changed that mentality with the Spurs game. We did sit deep, but we hit hard on the counter-attack. And if Solskjaer can adopt that same mentality against City, maybe we will see Manchester being red again in the Premier League at some point 
in the not too distant future. But in terms of this game, what a way to end this mad fixture, period, pile up, whatever you call it. And as far as Solskjaer remembers, City were just an inconvenience. All Solskjaer remembers as a player is City being his noisy neighbour and nothing more. He was always part of the United team that bettered City. And if he can come with that approach and, and mentality and pass that onto the players, maybe he can help change the landscape back towards Manchester being red once more. But if Solskjaer can finish this fixture pileup by somehow beating City, again, another big tick in the box of Solskjaer getting the job full time. So overall, I think the reality here is quite simple. If Solskjaer gets the right results in these sets of games, I think he effectively guarantees himself the United job next season. What would those right results be? That's beating PSG. That's going through into the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Beating Liverpool. Stopping this Liverpool momentum, maybe stopping them winning the Premier League, but just beating Liverpool is always a major, major step in the right direction for any manager. And not losing to City, not being humiliated by City like we have been so many times. Not just in the, the results, but in the overall performance of the game. If you can get those three, Solskjaer, and maybe back that up by beating Chelsea in, in the FA Cup, that will be another momentum boost. It's not as important as the other games, but still beating Chelsea is always a good day for a United fan. And Arsenal as well in the Premier League. That's important. But those... Those are the most important ones for me. Beating PSG over two legs. Beating Liverpool and not losing against City. If you can do those, those results there and match them among beating Arsenal, making sure you beat Palace and Southampton, then why not? Why wouldn't Solskjaer then have showed that he had all the credentials needed to be Manchester United's manager full-time? Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you think we just have to wait until the end of the season before we can say anything? Or do you think that by the end of March... We can know whether Solskjaer is good enough to be United's manager full-time next season. Let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, if you are new to United People's TV and you're still here, well done, first of all. Second of all, go down there and subscribe and get involved. Lots of videos coming out. Get involved in the community. But until next time, take it easy.